So welcome everybody by the first IoT Burstcast by the Things uh, Industries. Uh, here with us is Matt Johnson from uh, Bear Conductive, uh, co-founder, uh, founder CEO, uh, and we're going to talk about painting walls with IoT. Matt, can you shortly introduce us, introduce yourself? I can. Yes, I think that's probably the best short introduction for what we do. Um, so we are a printed sensor company, and um, our eventual goal is to be integrating sensor intelligence into construction materials themselves. Um, all they're doing is using conductive inks and paints, both printed and painted onto surfaces in the built environment to detect a huge range of events from water leak detection, um, people in the room, to even to pests. Okay. Okay, cool. So, so how does it exactly work? I mean, the links are below. Well, like, there's a lot of explainer sure. videos. So, 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 um, um, I want to, like, painting eye walls with IoT, like, why, yeah. how, what? Okay, so how does it work from a technical standpoint is super interesting uh, and close to my heart. Uh, we have built a technology stack that starts at a conductive ink. So let's say that we're interested in a smart floor. So this is a, of huge interest to us, um, smart flooring technologies. We take some sort of substrate, so that could be like a flooring underlayment, so a sheet of plastic or a sheet of paper. We print a conductive ink onto that. The, the shapes that we print, that pattern, forms a kind of lens for us. We connect a small piece of hardware, which can cover a really large area. Um, so we have one piece of hardware per room, essentially. Then what we're doing is projecting an electric field, and we're measuring changes in that field when someone, say, walks over the top of that uh, substrate. So it's really the combination of what we print, the hardware, and then the firmware together that makes the sensor operate. If you take one of those things away, then the system doesn't work. Yeah, and, so, and what does it sense then if you if you put it yeah. on a wall or on a floor or like, 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 like yeah. Sure, so we're using, from a physics standpoint, we're using three different sensor methodologies depending on the use case, so either resistive, capacitive, or inductive. Um, and, you know, the most common for us right now is capacitive. So what we're actually sensing is a change in electrical capacitance. So when we're looking for a human, what we're detecting is their body's ability to, uh, to hold an electrical charge. And so we're, we're sensing the water in our bodies. Um, and what we can do is detect that at quite a distance. So for a lot of engineers out there, they'll probably say, come on, capacitive sensing is not new. That's true. It's in smartphone touchscreens. Um, it's in laptop trackpads. We're just doing it at quite an extreme scale with a lot of proximity. So we can detect somebody from about a meter away. And we can detect that with quite a significant amount of resolution. So a good example is fall detection, where mm -hmm. we can't just tell if someone is present. So that's obviously important. You know, we have a person here. here. But if they've fallen over, we want to know, did they sit down? Did they fall down? Did they fall down with so much force that maybe we should worry that they've fractured something? So we have the ability to differentiate between those different types of events. Ah, super interesting. So um, do you have any other examples of, of business cases, use cases? Uh, sure. So one of our best customers is IKEA. Um, and with IKEA, we're developing a series of tables that have um, a, a touch-sensitive surface on the top, um, which is uh, serving as a control for um, smart home products. And I think it's a really interesting use case um, for a couple reasons. First, I think a lot of people don't see uh, um, IKEA as being a smart home company. Um, Trust me, they are. They have a very sophisticated view of how people incorporate technology in quite a quiet way into their lives. Um, you know, technology that provides real benefit. Um, and as part of that, they want to reduce the, the physical presence of that technology and the impact and, and blend it into the surfaces around them. So the, our technology allows us to create a piece of furniture that effectively looks like any other piece of furniture, and we don't really add many additional components to bring a whole new functionality. So <clears throat> that's, you know, a, a um, there's some specific benefits to it, but that's kind of an exciting, fun project versus fall detection, which is a, you know, a, a much more practical and, and safety-oriented project. 
Great, great. So, so I want to want to explore this technology. Maybe I have a smart building, or I have <laughs> a, a a distribution center, and I I, I want to use your technology. How do I get started? Well, uh, thank you for asking that. Um, so, you know, we believe very strongly that putting technology into the hands of engineers, designers, artists, creators is absolutely critical. Um, you know, it's much easier for us if somebody can test something themselves and validate it. So because of that, we have a thriving development kit uh, business that we've created. We have a great community of people. We have something like 300 tutorials now. Um, you can buy that all through bearconductive.com. And, you know, honestly, from a higher level as a business, that's the best lead generation for us as well. Um, you know, we have privileged access to some amazing smart surface applications because we want to create these tools that are easy for other people to use and incorporate into their area of expertise. Right. Cool. Super interesting. So, uh, and, and so, so um, you're detecting changes in the environment, mm -hmm. uh, then you need to bring it to the internet. So, so how, how, how does this converge with connectivity uh, technologies in, the, in IoT? Yeah, so, uh, you know, frequently people ask, you know, like, wh why now? I think it's a great question to ask any new technology company. Like, why is this being, I wasn't it invented previously? Um, and for us, um, you know, connectivity is a big part of that. So we really require, well, our big proposition is that surfaces across the built environment should be connected. And to do that, you need very efficient communication. Um, and I think that there are a set of technologies now, LoRaWAN certainly one of them, uh, that allow us to get information from the surface to the cloud in a very power efficient way. And we can tune that communication for the use case. Um, so that's of interest to us. We do also have applications that use Bluetooth. Um, and uh, we, have a, we have one application that uses Wi-Fi as well. Um, but you know, all, all of those kind of work in in hand in hand with the power side of, of what we're providing as well. Uh, interesting. So, um, and uh, once I connect uh, my, my IoT electronics to your paint, uh, yeah. do I then need to build lots of complicated AI myself to get like, to, to analyze these changes in this uh, uh, yeah, field? That's it. That's a good question. Uh, no. So we do all of our processing at the hardware right now. And we really think that that's important to keep it as, at the edge as much as possible. I think there are a lot of efficiencies to be gained there. But I also think that, um, you know, we have um, a, quite a sophisticated way to train our models. And um, we try to work with customers if they're use case, um, so something we've never worked on before, we'll work closely with a customer to tune the model to uh, classify events and, and, and get a false positive rate that everyone's comfortable with. Um, and so our goal is to take that burden on. What we want to do is hand you as many different types of events as possible in our API, and then you can do whatever you like with them and play with them. You know, we want to hand you really good, clean data and not bother you with the, the physics. <laughs> Great, great. This sounds like a super interesting innovation, and um, we'll put in the, the links uh, below on where you great. can probably see all the fancy videos on your websites and how to get started. Um, I want to thank you very much uh, for uh, for this uh, this um, this webinar, and um, uh, and uh, good luck with the business. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks again for your time.